In this video, we'll discuss the logic associated with D-type flip-flops. So let's start with a note from OCR from their clarification document. It states candidates need to understand the purpose and principles of D-type flip-flops and how and when they're used in a computer. Students will be able to recognise how a D-type flip-flop can be triggered by a clock pulse, but you're not expected to memorise the logic gates that make one up. Now, what OCR calls a D-type flip-flop circuit is actually called a clock D latch circuit. A true D-type flip-flop should be known as a master-slave D-type flip-flop. However, it's really important not to overcomplicate what you need to learn for your exams. So we're going to start by going over the absolute basics before looking at the concepts in more detail. Now, an electronics engineer might tell you this is an overly simplistic abstraction, but it is more than sufficient for A-level. If you do want to know more, you can check out the Beyond the Spec section at the end of this video. So combinational logic circuits, such as the full adder shown in the last video, provide us with important processing functions. However, they don't allow us to maintain a state. As well as performing calculations, computers also have to be able to store and recall values. These memory elements, which need to preserve data over time, can also be built from logic circuitry. The most fundamental of these circuits is the flip-flop, a building block for almost all memory devices. A flip-flop is a fundamental logic circuit that can store one bit and flip it between a zero and one. It has two inputs, a single bit data input, often called D, and a clock signal, often labeled C. It has two outputs, a single bit data output, often called Q, and the inverse of the data output, often labeled not Q. The clock signal is provided by another circuit that changes state at time intervals or pulses. A computer's internal clock synchronizes the state changes facilitated by flip-flop circuits. You may have noticed that a D-type flip-flop is made up of an unfamiliar type of logic gate. These are NAND gates, not AND. A NAND gate joins the output from an AND gate and a NOT gate together. In simpler terms, it reverses the output of the AND gate. AND and NOT is such a useful combination that a single NAND gate is often used instead. In fact, the NAND gate is so useful, it is known as a universal logic gate. All Boolean functions and gates can be made using only NAND gates. As NAND gates are not in the spec and you're not expected to memorise the logic gates that make up a D-type flip-flop, we can simplify the diagram. The little triangle represents the input C is being provided by a clock signal. You may see this in A-level textbooks and exam papers when they refer to a D-type flip-flop circuit. So the D-type flip-flop is what's known as a positive edge-triggered flip-flop circuit. That means the output can only be changed when the clock pulse is at the rising or positive edge. If the clock is not at a rising or positive edge, the output value is held and does not change. When the clock signal is not at a positive edge, so the 1, the output value of Q is held and does not change. So here we have a one bit memory device that's able to capture and store a single bit of data, a one or a zero. Now let's look at this with the aid of a shared timeline. So the clock pulses at regular intervals and there is obviously a delay between a high one and a low zero signal as shown here. However, a D-type flip-flop circuit only receives a high one signal at the rising edge, i.e. the very moment the signal changes from low to high. The D-type flip-flop circuit perceives its input more accurately from the clock changing states, as shown in the second timeline. 
Now there is a tiny fraction of time where the signal reads as one before falling back to zero, but by only taking the reading at the rising edge, it can be measured in nanoseconds. And so we can show it effectively as an instant and regular pulse or heartbeat. So here's the starting situation represented by the red dotted line on our shared timelines down the bottom. The single bit data input D is set to zero. The clock pulse is high and at its rising edge, one, i.e. the beginning of a clock cycle. Output Q is zero and output not Q is one. Now, as not Q is simply the inverse of Q, we're going to omit it going forward and ignore it from the timeline. Let's run the timeline and watch what happens. Notice how Q only takes on the value of D at the rising edge of the clock pulse. This is the only moment the clock signal input is high or one. Another way of remembering this is to say that Q follows D at the rising edge of the clock. So we can see here we're going to get a clock pulse, one, it's gone now, so although the value of D is changing, the value of Q remains where it is. A clock pulse is coming up, so that's going to transfer D to Q. There it goes. But D is not being transferred to Q now because the clock's showing zero. OK, so let's summarise the basics. A D-type flip-flop is a one-bit memory device that's enabled and disabled by a clock signal. It's used in memory circuits, counters and shift registers. Shift registers handle signals arriving on parallel lines at different times. It can be edge triggered, allowing synchronization with other components. This example that we talked through is a positive edge trigger, meaning it's enabled at the moment the clock signal rises from low to high. What we've shown you is actually known as a clocked D-latch or pulse latch circuit. But for your exams at A-level, you should think of this as a D-type flip-flop. OK, so we've covered the basics you need to know for the exam. We're now going to go into a little more detail. Although you don't strictly need to know this, it will help you gain a better grasp on how a D-type flip-flop works behind the scenes. If you really want to know more detail and go in depth, check out our Beyond the Specs section at the end of the video. So here's the starting situation again, represented by the red dotted line. So we have the single bit data input D is set to zero. The clock pulse is high and at a rising edge, one. So the beginning of a clock cycle, output Q is zero and output not Q is one. And again, because not Q is simply the inverse of Q, we're gonna omit that going forward. So here, the clock pulse is high. However, we're not at the rising edge, so it's representing zero. Input D is zero and output Q remains zero. The clock pulse is still low. It's actually at its falling edge, so it represents off or zero. Input D is changed to one, but, the, but because the clock is not providing a positive high at its rising edge, the state of Q holds its value of zero, even though D is changed to one. At the moment, we can say that Q is not following D. The clock pulse is still low, zero. The input D remains at one, so the value of Q is still unchanged. At the moment, Q is still not following D. Well, now the clock pulse is high and we're at its rising edge, so it represents as a one. Now the input D has remained at one. Remember, Q will take on the value of D if it's different at the point of a rising edge. So the input value of one at D is now transferred to Q. Q is now said to be following D. Let's look at how that transition takes place in more detail. The clock pulse presents as high one because it adds its rising edge. This sends the high or one signal to the first two NAND gates. The top left NAND gate is now receiving two ones as its input, so it outputs zero. The bottom left NAND gate is now receiving zero and one as its inputs, so it continues to output one. Now, did you spot something a little odd just now? Let's play that back really slowly and take another look. 
The change of state from high one to low zero takes time to propagate through the connection to the next set of NAND gates. Until it arrives, the NAND gates in yellow are still both receiving a pair of ones as their input. Now on top of this, the time it takes a signal to propagate through a circuit will vary depending on factors such as manufacturing quality, temperature and outside interference. Now the good news is you don't need to worry about any of this at eight level. Simply consider that the logic gate circuit switches instantly from one state to another as its inputs change. The top right NAND gate is now receiving naught and one as its input, so our output changes to one. This output is also fed back in as an input to the bottom right NAND gate. This means it's now receiving two ones, and so output zero. If we move on, the clock pulse is high. However, it's not at its rising edge, so it represents as a zero. Input D has now changed to zero. Remember though, Q only takes on a new value if the value of D is different at the point of a rising edge. So the input value at D is not transferred to Q. It has been held or stored. Q once again is no longer following D. This process is exactly the same as the simpler abstracted version we showed you earlier, with Q taking on the value of D at the rising edge of each new clock cycle. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is the purpose of D-type flip-flops and where are they used in a computer? So really that's everything you need to know for the exam, but if you're curious and learning a bit more, you can watch the rest of this video. Okay, so if you're still here, you must want to know a little more about this important type of circuit. Be warned, although what we cover here is correct, it is going to complicate your current understanding. Some of it will contradict what we've taught you and what you're expected to know for the exam. But this is highly indicative of the subject you are learning. At times, to introduce a concept, we have to highly abstract and even bend the truth. Once you understand the basics, you can dig a little deeper and learn how these concepts work in reality. Once more, I just stress, if you're just after passing the exam, you may want to avoid the rest of this video, but if you have a real curiosity about this circuit and you're thinking of taking it on to degree level, this is really fascinating stuff. The circuit diagram in this video is not a real D-type flip-flop. It's actually a gated D-latch. This type of circuit has some limitations. So far, we've abstracted them from you. So a gated D latch actually receives a positive high input of one for half an entire clock cycle as shown here. This results in Q taking on the value of D at any point where the clock is positive or high. Again, when the clock is low, zero, Q retains its value regardless of any changes to input D. Now this is not ideal. Depending on the frequency of the clock, the enabling input could be high for anything from 10 to 100 microseconds. And that's a very long time for a computer for the gated D latch to be open to potential changes from its input. To further complicate the issue, remember that we want an effective one bit memory device. If we wanted to create a buffer that could hold a four bit binary number to be used in calculations, we would need four of these latches all working together. To change the data held in this buffer, we need to synchronize these latches so they all operate at the same time. We do this by connecting the enabling input of each latch to a single shared clock. A D-type flip-flop isn't enabled for the entire duration of half a clock cycle though. We know it's much more precise. It's only enabled at the rising edge, the very moment the signal changes from low to high. This results in a very different output to Q as shown in the second timeline. So how is the circuit actually created to prevent the clock input from being read as positive or high for half the entire duration of a clock cycle? Well, we need some kind of edge detection device which will convert the regular clock signal into a series of very short, sharp pulses. Consider this circuit where the clock signal is passed through an AND gate with one of its inputs first 
passing through a NOT gate. At first it appears that this combination of gates is pointless. When the clock signal is positive or high 1, the AND gate receives 1 and 0, and so outputs 0. When the clock signal is negative or low, the AND gate receives 0 and 1 as its outputs, so the output is still 0. The beauty of this simple circuit is that the NOT gate does not invert its input instantly. The signal has to propagate through the NOT gate. Even though this happens very quickly, there is a slight momentary lag after the clock signal transitions. This way, the NOT gate is acting as a kind of buffer. Now, this animation is highly exaggerated. In reality, the AND gate outputs are 1 for a few nanoseconds. We've successfully created a circuit that can detect the brief moment when an input rises from low to high, the rising edge. To complicate matters even more, the pulse produced by this edge detection device may not be wide enough to open the gated D latch to let data in at all. And this can be affected by voltage levels and characteristics of the individual electronic components. One solution used in electronics is to simply increase the pulse width by adding in more NOT gates and thus adding in more delay. When doing this, we need to make sure there's always an odd number of NOT gates to invert the signal. Remember, we're talking about degree level and above electronics here. This will never come up in an A-level computer science exam. So here's an updated circuit with an edge detection device attached to the clock signal. Now, the addition of the edge detection device is causing the clock signal to be perceived as a near instantaneous pulse. So this is a D-type flip-flop circuit then. Well, no. What we have now is known as a clocked D-latch or pulse latch. However, most people would call it a D-type flip-flop as it behaves in much the same way with only a few small limitations. So this is the circuit for a true D-type flip-flop, or to give it its full name, a master-slave D-type flip-flop. With this circuit, we can accurately control the exact moment a group of 1-bit memory devices changes states. A D-type flip-flop is made up of a level triggered gated D-latch, where the enabling device is connected to a clock with an edge triggered device, a level triggered gated SR latch. The output from one latch becomes the input to the other. In addition, the inverted clock signal is attached to the enabling input of the SR latch. The D latch is known as the master, while the SR latch is known as the slave. The master reads the input value at D when the clock signal is at its rising edge. At this point, the slave is disabled, meaning the new output from the entire flip-flop is currently not available. As soon as the clock signal falls to low, the NOT gate enables the slave. The data held in the master is now passed to the slave, so it becomes available at the output Q. You can think of this a bit like an airlock. Neither half of the flip-flop is fully open at the same time. That means an input signal can't pass straight through this circuit like it can with the simpler ones we looked at earlier. This design prevents what are known electronics as glitches propagating through the circuit.